Hello there, mother, Stan, other interested parties. Yes, today uh, I offer what I believe to be definitive proof uh, as to whether this iconic image of the Loch Ness Monster is indeed a real or fake photograph. Now I'll just give you a bit of background. Uh, my interest in all things Loch Ness began in my formative years when I read this book. Yes, The Loch Ness Story by Nicholas Witchell. Uh, yeah, and that is THE Nicholas Witchell. Yes, see, there's a picture of him there on another edition. Yes, Nicholas Witchell. Um, now having read said book, uh, I became convinced uh, of the existence of a large uh, animal or animals uh, swimming round in Loch Ness. Uh, why did I come to this conclusion? Well, it was just a sheer weight of evidence, the eyewitness testimony, uh, things like, for example, the Rhine's uh, underwater flipper photograph, um, Nab's uh, photo in Uckert Bay. Yes, now I know that's the Disney one, but the, uh, the, the real one was like postage stamp time, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, sonar. Yeah, for example, that one there. Yeah, I don't know if you can see much there, but uh, two large objects uh, chasing uh, fish around in the depths uh, of Loch Ness. And this photo. Now, what is, what is first of all, what is so compelling about this, this, uh, this photo? Well, uh, its lines, its symmetry, its proportions, uh, everything about it looks right. I mean, I think that's the main thing about this is that it, if, if a please your soul type animal did shove its neck out of the, uh, the loch, you know, one afternoon and somebody took a photo of it, it would pretty much look like this. Uh, its proportions are right. Um, and you get, a, you get a sense of something under the water as well. A bit, you, you can see this dark area here, maybe a flipper there. Uh, there's circular wave pattern. Uh, emanating from it. I mean everything about this suggests to me an animate object uh, sat on the top of the loch. Uh, in a nutshell that is what is so compelling about it. Um, and to illustrate my point uh, I would like to show you a few other uh, head and neck photos taken in the loch. Yes, stick. Stick. Bird. You have to squint for a few of these. Uh, stick. Here's one I made earlier. Here's another I made earlier. Life on Mars. A large plesiosaur type animal residing on the loch surface. Or so I thought. Now uh, I think in the 90s, was it? In the 90s, Geezer comes forward and says this photo is in fact a fake. Now my initial reaction to this was, you know, Geezer uh, is a publicity seeker. Yeah? I mean, Geezer says uh, this was actually a plasticine model on top of a, a submarine floating about in the loch, you know? I mean, to me, I mean, there was no way it would look as good as that. I mean, it would, wouldn't it sink, flip over, all this sort of stuff? I thought, no, nah, I just dismissed it. You know, cobblers. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cobblers. <laughs> Says it all, doesn't it? Um, but then more recently, more recently, I sort of, uh, I started to think about this. I started to think about this a bit more. Um, and I sort of subjected this to a more rigorous critique, shall we say. I mean, let's just uh, let's just have a look at this. If, if this is an animal, right? Let's uh, let's consider a few things about it. Well, for example, well, for a start, I mean, it's it's quite happy there, sat on the surface of the loch. Uh, indicates to me this is clearly an air-breathing animal. Yeah. Now, if it's an air breather, you would think you'd see a lot more of it on the surface, breathing air. Um, some other things to consider as well. I mean, if you think of other air-breathing aquatic animals, uh, for example, a whale. Now, a whale has a, has a massive blowhole, you know, sucks in gallons of air, can stay underwater for quite some time. Consider this creature, right? Small head, small mouth. This isn't going to be able to 
you know, inhale much air and submerge for any length of time. In fact, this animal looks to me as though it'll probably spend as much time in the air, out of the water, as in it. So why, you know, why no more sightings? Um, secondly, the, the plesiosaur angle. Now, you know, plesiosaurs could not do that. The neck had to remain horizontal to the body because of the vertebrae. So, a small point because this doesn't necessarily have to be a plesiosaur, but, you know. Um, most of the fish in Loch Ness are in top 30 metres. Uh, Usain Bolt can cover 30 metres in about just over three seconds, flat out. Yeah, it's not a great depth. One of these things, or a family of these things, charging about, you know, feeding on fish, you'd see disturbance on the water. You know, yeah. Also, uh, I mean, I'd, there'd have been sightings in Loch Ness going back hundreds, you know, maybe thousands of years, who, who knows. Um, now, there's not a huge fish population in the loch. Uh, I've heard that the fish population would probably sustain 10 to 20 individuals of a large animal like this. Uh, now that would present problems over a length of time. Uh, I mean, we're talking about disease, uh, accidents, uh, drop in the fish population, um, gender imbalance, uh, and chronic inbreeding. So, all of a sudden, doesn't look so convincing, does it? But, if I come to the, uh, the main thrust of this video, the proof. Okay, well, uh, Wilson, the surgeon, who uh, took this photo in 1934, um, actually took four photos. Um, the famous one, two blanks, and that one. Just the head, a bit of the neck, above the water. Now, when Wilson... There's a picture of him there, by the way. Yeah, might not have caught that. Yeah, when he went to the chemist uh, to collect his photos, he only wanted this one. He did not want the one just showing the head out of the water. Now, let's consider this for a moment. If this is genuine, this is quite simply the most remarkable wildlife photograph ever taken. And that being the case, that would be the second most remarkable wildlife photograph ever taken. Now why did Wilson not want that second photo? Well, at the risk of stating the bleeding obvious, uh, it was of no value to him. Now why was it of no value to him? I mean, if I had taken a picture of a creature, the most you know, famous creature on the planet, you know, I, I'd want all the photos of it. Uh, I didn't want the blanks. Uh, but Wilson didn't want it. Why is that? Well. Quite simply, this and this are fakes. He didn't want the second photo because he'd already got the Hollywood photo. He'd got this, this is what he was after, this is what he was going to present to the world. Thus, this one became worthless and he didn't want it. <laughs> Simple as that. And... Um, just to uh, enlarge on this again, to go back to some earlier uh, earlier things I've shown you, um, McNabb's photo. In the real photo, the tower, the reflection tower, is bent, which suggests but maybe a bit of trickery going on. I don't know. Wake of a boat, boat removed, quite possibly. That is the original unenhanced picture of the flipper. Yeah. I don't know quite what that is, I think I had it for soup this afternoon, yeah? whatever that is. Um, the sonar, yeah, two shapes chasing fish, yeah, two boats above, reflections off the lock's bottom, they were in shallow water. Who knows? But that's another video, yes, I think I might do another uh, video of the, uh, the Loch Ness phenomenon. And just one thing I will say, I'm not dismissing the chances of there being a creature or creatures uh, in the loch. Just because this is a fake doesn't mean there isn't something going on there. 
In my next video I will address the actual Loch Ness monster thing as a whole. And the key photograph to me, believe it or not, is that. That is the key photo to the Loch Ness Phenomenon. And I'll explain why uh, in my next video if I ever get around to doing it. Yes, if you got this far, thanks for viewing. Um, have a good evening. Anakin, peace.